Hey, what's up, everybody? It's me again. It's T-Ron. That's T-E-A-R-O-N, period. And I'm here with you for another edition of the Ubiquitous Blacks podcast. And I'm very excited about this one because, number one, it's going to be the first time that we are actually talking to a cousin from Kenya. Let's say that. <laughs> and then also, the person that I'm, we're going to be uh, talking to today is someone who I've come across in a very interesting way. As you all know, TikTok is the place to be, right? Um, a lot of people are finding their footing with this app, and a lot of people are reaching people and reaching audiences that they never would beforehand. And I don't know what it is about these TikTok al al algorithms, excuse me, but uh, China has got us, <laughs> got us all going here. And there are some people who I feel like are doing a good job of mastering that particular platform. If you know me, you know, I don't like to post all the time. I, I can't like, I don't know. Like, you know, some people, they wake up and they say, I'm going to make breakfast. And they somehow know consciously that they're going to turn that breakfast into content for social media. Or they, they, they just are better at curating and keeping that up. I can't live like that. Because if I was going to do that day to day, like planning and putting everything for content, you always see me on the toilet in the shower, like you was, you see all the trash shit. And so <laughs> I don't have anything to share. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I don't think I'm that interesting, but I do think our guest today is quite interesting because I saw this person go from just trying shit out, like trying things out, doing little stuff here and there on TikTok. And then all of a sudden it's getting viral videos and stuff. And it's, it's quite interesting to me. <laughs> And I just love, I love to see it. I, I, when I first came across this person, um, there were a group of young black African guys hanging out in a park, dancing, having a good time. And I was like, yes, yes, this is, this is good shit. No, nobody was fighting. Everybody was smiling. It was just really good vibes. And so I stuck with it ever since. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to Chisoni. Chisoni, if you would, Take over, introduce yourself to everyone, let them know who you are, where you're from, what you do, what you're eating. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, um, I'm eating chicken and fries, as you can see. Yeah. I'm from Kenya. My name is Chesoni. Uh, that's my nickname in TikTok. My real name is Shadra Kuchien. But I prefer Chesoni because uh, I was given by my mom. And mother is everything. Yeah, I'm from Kenya. Um, basically, what I'm doing right now is mostly TikTok videos, and I love doing. I, I like doing the the live shows. I like more live lively things than recorded. Yeah. So, yeah, and I'm more of a. More of a person who, who really want to enjoy the exact time. So when I go live, I feel like I'm enjoying that time. Yeah, rather than when I record. So I do TikTok and I have some few small businesses I do uh, that I support myself and my brothers. Okay. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this. Going live, do, how many followers did you have before you were able to go live on TikTok? Um, do you recall? Yeah, I do. I was having like first. Let me tell you how I started it. Like when I started TikTok, I followed like five thousand people on that very day. Oh, three thousand people. Five thousand. I followed five thousand. 5, okay, okay. Yeah, and then on that same on that same day, I got over one thousand two hundred followers. In, on that one, same in day. one day. Yeah. Did you have anything posted? Did you have videos up already? I already had like two videos. Okay. Oh, I'm listening. So um, they were generous to follow me. And I'm like, I went live that single day. And I was, yeah, I was eager to open the live. So I opened the live. And unfortunately, it was only one person watching me. I was like, why is it one person? And I have like a thousand followers. Scam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't make sense. <laughs> so, um, 
I I, I quitted that day and I was like, no, let me follow. And then I followed again up to 6,000 followers. Yeah. And the next time I was live, I met like five people. So I was like, what, what do these people really want so that they can stay on my live? Okay. Right. Uh, I thought of maybe playing African music and something like that. Yeah, so I started playing music from my country for quite a time. Yeah, that was back in Nairobi. Because after school, I went to Nairobi. That was back in Nairobi. And now from TikTok, uh, I started going viral like that. With 5,000 followers, I could get up to 3,000 people watching me. It was like that for quite some months, maybe four months mm -hmm. later. Yeah, I used to have like a great multitude of uh, people following me. I'm watching my life today. Like they don't follow me, but when I go live, they're there. Yeah. That's wild. That's wild. See, I just can't figure it out. Like, okay. There's different rules for different regions. I don't know. TikTok is very particular. Here in the U.S., you can't even go as go like join as a guest on someone's live unless you have a thousand followers. Literally, and I'm like, what? yo, <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. It's cra It's it's a it's a crazy <laughs> rule. Like there's there's no live button for you until you reach a thousand followers. It's like they, they are um, forcing you to put up stuff, get engagement, get a, you know what I mean? Like they're forcing you to be on the thing to, to be able yeah. to, I said, this is wild. This is crazy, yo. It's, in, it's so interesting to me how people sort of find their niche. Do you feel like as someone who is starting to find an audience through social media, do you feel like you have to keep up doing the same things and also do you feel like you want to you want to see how you can successfully take that audience and move it into doing other stuff like do you ever think about that yeah i normally think of that every day and i'm like um i can move this audience maybe to something else other than tiktok that's why mostly on my live, um, I normally give them like another picture of that. It's not more about the live, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and having fun and enjoying and, you know, and you guys sending gifts. No, it is not always about like that. There's something else behind it. Maybe if you can listen to my story and to the brothers that I'm having right now, um, you can also think outside TikTok. And you okay. can come up with ideas outside TikTok and we can help each other. Yeah. Because because that's that's one thing I've always um been fearful of. Is I've always like I know I pretty much can sit back as a creative and I see things and I'm like, okay, I know what it takes to to go viral. And, and you could just do silly, ridiculous shit and you can go viral, right? Um, but I, I I've always been fearful of doing the one thing that everybody likes and feeling like I have to be stuck doing that again. You know what I mean? Um, like the one guy, um, KB, right? Is that how you say his name? Kabi, KB, I don't know. The big TikToker, right? Kabi Lim. Huh? Kabi Lim. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, uh -huh. he found, he found a thing and everybody was liking the one thing and now he is the one thing, which is fine for him because it turned out to be a success story. But when you are truly someone who is creative, let's say you are a musician or you are an actor or you have a, a passion to like do performing arts and things like this. You you don't really get into that or you don't want to you don't want to be stuck having to do the same thing. And I've always been scared of that fact. And I think that's one of the things that holds me back from even putting things out there on social media and stuff is I just don't want to be the one known for the one thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Do you ever have those? Like, do, do you ever feel like that? Like, do you ever feel um, like, for me, damn, I don't... For, me, for me, I don't feel like that because I'm like, let me share the whole of my story from head to toe. You know, 
let me share everything from head to toe. I don't, I don't, I don't like really want to hide anything or anything like that. If I'm sharing, I'm sharing everything. Yeah. You know, I'm like, um, the people who go through a lot, but they normally don't want to um, talk about it, post it, um, because maybe they feel ashamed. So I'm like, let me share my story to the world. And maybe, you know, whoever is having similar story as mine can, uh, can be motivated in something like that. Okay. I, I I like that. I I like that. There's at least a um a goal or a mission behind it, to kind of keep you going. So we'll get back to that. But let's talk. Let's talk about your story, okay? For me, as someone who's become a fan of what you do and just being entertained by you, because I think it's like I say, really good vibes, fun times, right? That's it. That's pretty much where it stops for me. I don't. I'm just like I don't know much else about. <laughs> I don't know much yeah. else, right? But yeah. yeah, I want to give you a chance to tell people more about you while we do this, right? So let's talk about let's talk about where you're from. Let's talk about your upbringing, your background. You are you currently living in Kenya? Yeah. Where are you originally from? What city? What town? Tell us about. Where you grew up? I was born in Nairobi, and I grew up in Nairobi until I reached um, twelve. Uh, at that time, my parents died, and then now I have to I had to go to the streets. Okay, and Nairobi, surviving in Nairobi streets was hard. Like it was cold. People are minding their own business because it's it's the city. Okay, okay. nobody wanna listen. Nobody want to listen to your, uh, um, you know, your problems. And I was young, like, nobody could even ask me if, you're, if I've eaten anything, okay? So um, I decided to move, maybe to find somewhere um, suitable for me, where I can maybe sleep outside and not um, feel the cold. So I had to move to Mombasa. Mombasa. Because Mombasa, Mombasa. Was yeah. It's a city, Mombasa is a city. How far away is that from Nairobi? From Nairobi, it is something to do with 530 kilometers. How much time? How much in, how far in time? <laughs> um, if you're going by bus, you will take something like eight hours. Okay. So yes. not yeah. immediately close, but not very far. I got you. I got you. And so how, how did you make that trip? You made it by bus? No, I walked. You I walked? Started. Yeah. Like you walked like with your legs? Yeah. Wait a minute. Okay, okay. So you said at this at this time, how old were you? Yeah. How old were you at the time? Twelve. 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 How did you know? Yeah. Were you were you were you fully alone at that point? Um I had to walk from Nairobi to Mombasa. And I didn't come alone because there in Nairobi, I was surviving with a friend of mine. He was younger than me though. He was 10, I was, I was 12. So I advised him maybe if we move to Mombasa, uh, we cannot die of cold because Nairobi is very cold. Uh, and it was the rainy season. And when we checked in Mombasa, Mombasa was not raining. It was very, um, very hot with high temperatures. So we had to walk from Nairobi to Mombasa. Um, we started the journey. Like it was, I can remember very well. It was on a Sunday morning. Like, you know, in Nairobi, Sundays, there's nobody in town, just the street family. Yes. So we, had, we started walking from 5 a.m. in the morning. Like waking up from sleep because we already talked. We yeah. know that um, the, the night before we walk, uh, we we already discussed, and we are like, tomorrow when we wake up, God willing, we're gonna walk to Mombasa. And my friend was like, yeah, let us walk. So we walked from Nairobi to Mombasa and took us like um ten days, I can say, to reach Mombasa. Yeah, the first day we walked the whole of it because we had energy, we had some money. And we had, we were prepared for the first day. Let me say that. Right. Yeah, we had some money. And 
we were, we were kind of prepared for the first day and we were like, anything that is coming our way, uh, we're going to deal with it. Okay. So we kicked off our journey and we traveled for like um, from 5, 5 a.m. We rested at somewhere called Machakos and it was around midday. It was around midday, like 12 p.m. now. Uh -huh. From 5 a.m. Yeah, we've been just walking, eating all our stocks, like all the food stuff, the water, because um we, we are walking, we are walking, you know. You get angry easily, you get tired easily. Oops. Yeah. You get angry, you get tired easily, and we were like, um, let us get rid of these things. And to a point, before we reached Machakos, it was like Machakos is also a city. On the on your road to Mombasa, so before we reached Machakos, I was like, um, let us get rid of all these stuff. Let us carry them in our stomachs because we were like carrying them in shifts. It's your time to carry the water. It's your time to do this. So let us carry them in our stomach and then walk faster. So we ate everything we had, and um, I was left with only two hundred shillings. That is something to do with um, one dollar, one yeah. to two dollars. Yeah, and over here is a lot of money. Because somebody, because um, over here, a work pays something like $5 a day. So when you have $2, you're very rich. And so we walked, uh, we walked past Machakos, and now it was getting dark. Now that's where the challenges begin. Where now it got dark, because people are like, um, you know, there, after you leave Nairobi, it's now rural, okay? Um, the countryside, after you leave Nairobi. There's no lights. There are no uh, houses along the road. So we were walking in total darkness. And on the way, somebody was like cycling. And from afar, we could see um, like some lights. Okay. And that that person came, the lights came, the lights came. And we, we definitely reached it. It was a cycler. And he was like, um, are you guys walking in this dark alone? And you're like, children? I am afraid of walking. And we're like, why are you afraid of walking? There are lions, there are hyenas, there are all those stuff. And you're young, you, you can't even protect yourself. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you, let me tell you, Chisori. I was, okay, when I was in West Africa, I was, um, I was like chilling, eating breakfast one morning. And there was like a bird, right? It, it wasn't bothering me but it, it there was a bird but it was a sound that i had never heard before right because i'm in another place that scared the shit out of me it's in the morning like early in the morning and i heard the bird and i was like whoa <laughs> so so i'm just imagining as you're telling me this story i'm just imagining like the sounds the darkness total darkness right like i get scared like if a squirrel crosses the street in my direction, I get scared. I, right. I don't fuck with any animal. You know what I'm saying? No. But yeah, yeah, did no. That, was, that, was that something that even crossed your mind, like, at that age? Or were you just like, oh, we're going to go? Like, had you ever even been to Mombasa before that? No. How did, you, how did you know to go to Mombasa? Like, who? It says, it says, it says uh, Mombasa Road. It is a famous road, Mombasa Road. Yes. Okay. What I'm asking you is, you could read from the signboards, Mombasa, five thirty kilometers. What had, you, what had you heard about Mombasa at at twelve years old that you thought to go there? You know what I mean. But by that time, I, I already finished class eight. Class eight is like grade seven. Uh -huh. So I I was clever. I was very clever. Like in class, I used to be very clever. Yeah. So I I used to like um read so much about Mombasa and and I knew I had some I had some I had some something in my head about Mombasa I know that Mombasa is hot that's one thing I knew and I knew that Mombasa was um Mombasa Mombasa had like um some beautiful centuries like you know I can go swim when it is hot and all that stuff and I was like, I'm a good swimmer from school. I was awarded some certificates. So yeah, let, let me go swim. And I'm like, I'm struggling here in Nairobi. There's no food. There's no nothing. I'm just sad. 
and I'm only 12. So yeah, I kicked off the journey. Okay. That's yeah, a yeah. lot. That's a lot. And and it, unfortunately he didn't have any runners with any hyena, so <laughs> That's good. That's good. So fast forward, you are now in Mombasa and how long, how long were you there? How long were you there on the street before you kind of found a community of, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I was in the street of Mombasa for like, um, six years. I left when I was um I left when I was 18. No, I stayed in Mombasa for one to five years. I left when I was 17. And then from from there I went direct to high school because you know I was sharp, I was clever. Yeah, so some people came and they they were like um they 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 think they think called it is called um it's an NGO and governmental thing. Mm-hmm. Whereby um, there are some people like um, the USAID. You know the USAID? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's this called the USAID. So they're like, um, they come to the streets and they help they help the needy. So when they came to me and they asked me like, um, what do you want with your life? And I told them like, if you can, guys can take me to school and then from there, you can just leave me alone. Just take me to school, pay my school fees and leave it to me. And then I'm like, I won't let you down. At this at this point, were you still with your friend that you made the trip with? No, no, no. The funny thing is that we survived all the obstacles with my friends, but when we reached Mombasa, we separated. Like we got into a fight. I've never met him up to today. I just hope he's successful wherever he is. I wish I could meet him so that um, he can he, he can be my witness to tell people that I really walked from Nairobi, from from Nairobi to Mombasa. He's the only witness, and I don't see him anymore. I don't know where he went. Wow. After today. So like, uh, what made us fight? It was like um, when we reached Mombasa, like this 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 way that went to town, and the other one went to um, some parts of Mombasa. So like, I was telling him, if we go this way, we go to town, okay. But if we go this way, you're going to get lost. And it was like, no, we have to go this way. Of course, I was right because I could see the flow of people. Every morning, people wake up and go to town. So the direction where people are going, I guess that was town. Okay. Yeah. And I told him, if you go this side, you go, we are going town. And he refused. And that's how we separated. Like he went that way, I went this way. Up to today, like it's something to do with um, 13 years now. So. See, okay, you, it's so it's so interesting because while while we both can we both are speaking English here, right? But we are yeah. we are often saying different things. So when you are saying we separated, for me, I'm thinking, okay, there was like circumstances, and then you all just grew apart. What you're saying is no, you literally separated on the road. This is a lot to me. No, like, I don't no, say no. Like being in a we relationship. literally <laughs> separated. Like I went this way and he went that way. Not, not you're not being figurative here. You're, you're being literal. That's wild. <laughs> I really, I really, ah. Uh. And th- and then to think, because he was at that point, he was younger than you too. I really do hope um, that he's okay. Ah, woo. Well. Let's fast forward a bit further. And you are now a young man. Um, you completed school, right? So you do all these things. What 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 are you doing at that point? Like, are you trying to like find work? Are you doing a you know what what are you doing? Yeah, after after I finished high school, you know, I went I, I went to college. First, uh, the funny thing is that um, I have three, I have three papers and I don't have work. I am a chef, a good okay. chef. Yeah, I can cook anything. Cook that chicken? It... <laughs> no, I didn't cook the chicken. I didn't cook the chicken. <laughs> this is from the from the restaurants I am. 
And I, I am a videographer. Okay. Yeah. And I also did um, telecommunication, mass communication. Okay. Yeah, I have those. I have diplomas, though. I don't have much. I have diplomas in all of them. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to go and do something like a degree with the with the with the communication. Okay. If I do if I do a degree in mass communication, maybe I'll get myself a job um, in a radio in a radio station or something like that. But first, um, I really want to get the degree, then talk of what's next. Because for now, I only have I have the diploma certificates for both cooking. Um, hotel, it's called hotel management. Say it again. Hotel management. Hotel management. I'm not going to try it. Yeah. <laughs> Over here, we call, it, we call it hotel management. Um, oh, wait. Okay. Hotel management. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> You know, you, this is this is another thing that's wild to me, right? The whole time I'm listening to you, and you know, you speak very clearly and everything. There are a few there are a few words of pronunciation that I'm just like, you know, and I and I'll get it. But you haven't you haven't once said that to me. I don't know. I'm like, are you are you you're just fully understanding everything that I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know why that is. Like have you, ever, have you ever thought about why that is? What is it? The reason the reason that you can just like get it, like you hear me and you're like, okay, he just sounds like a white guy, whatever. <laughs> but the, the reason that you get it is because you the the media that you were exposed to is the same stuff that I grew up on, right? So you are familiar with you know, American actors and movies and music and things like this. It doesn't happen the other way around for some reason. A lot of, a lot of us do not get media from other places. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like me, me, I'm aware because like I said, I talk to people in different places all the time. So I know Afrobeats. I know all these different artists from different countries and all this stuff, right? But that's me yeah, yeah. as an individual. And then like, I have to tell other people about it or introduce people to stuff. And you, you're just like, oh yeah, no, I'm, I, I, I don't understand you. It's because you grew up with it. I, I literally in my adulthood started like seeing like Kenyan things and artists and hearing stuff, and now I'm like following all these like Kenyan memes and <laughs> you know what I mean. Just in my adulthood. So when you say something like management. You say management, hotel man. I don't know how you when you fucking say it. How did you say it? Management. No, that's not how you say it. Management. We we call it hotel management. So you're saying the same thing, but it took me a moment. Uh, let me ask you. Let me ask you. As as a Kenyan, when you think about other um, whether it be other Africans or other black people and other countries what is what do you what do you know of or what what is it like you are aware of um just with us globally um okay. like what's your perception for me, uh, for me um i think they're they're far much better than us and what be clear be clear when you say this so far much better than us how, how do you Better than us because um, first they're exposed to Who? diversity. Who? Um, the guys that like um the Africans outside Africa. Okay. Yeah, they are far much better than us because number one, they are exposed to diversity. Okay. Technology. Those are the things we need here in Africa, but we don't have them. And then another thing they're exposed to um, is too much of um, civilization. Like what? There's so, much, there's so much of civilization. Compared to here in Africa, it is dictatorship. You know what I'm, missing, what I'm saying? Like over there, somebody can be like, like for now, you guys over there are like allowed to um, 
the men are allowed to marry each other. You know what I'm saying? That is kind of, um, that is called super civilization, okay? Compared to our country over here, that is considered a crime. Here in Kenya, it is still considered like when, when you go to the club and all that stuff, you're considered not holy, you don't know God and all that stuff. But I'm like, no, it is not. You, you just need to get um, exposed to these things. And you, you can know that they are not bad. So somebody in Africa won't read on the same, like an African outside Africa. There's one thing. They won't raise on the same unless you want to leave that country to another one. But if you're in Africa to stay, it is very hard for you to reason like an African outside Africa. So I believe, I, I, I believe like um, it is good when we get exposure, we as Africans, okay, when our leaders will like allow um, civilization because they are not allowing civilization because they don't want to be um they don't want to be exposed maybe of their that jobs and corruptions and all that stuff and they want to rule like to rule with a rod yeah so africans outside africa are far much better than africans inside africa okay and so just just want to clarify for everyone when you're hearing that, again, we we are speaking both speaking English here, but we we say slightly different things. We mean something different, and so pretty much what what you're saying is that, um, when you say better than us, you just mean more um, more aware or have uh, different opportunities and things like. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to be clear about that because I don't want anybody to twist it. <laughs> <laughs> where where is somewhere that you've always wanted to go that isn't in kenya where's a place that you always usa <laughs> no question about that's so no general where, where in the usa do you know do you know where um i know atlanta okay so just tell me where, where so you say you know about atlanta what do you know about atlanta um i know of the of the black history in atlanta okay yeah okay. i do <laughs> who told you about this <laughs> let me tell you do you hear the way i speak no no it's... <laughs> no 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 what's the way you speak <laughs> wait i finish wait i finish um for a very long time i wanted to go to the u.s and I've, I've been I've been practicing like I'm um, to talk like um um the blacks in the US. Let me I gotta I gotta hear this. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I gotta hear this. What what does it sound like? Sure, give me give me an example. I gotta hear this. Oh, uh, I don't have like an accent yet, but I'm like as as much as I can understand what you're telling me. And I uh -huh. can, uh, I can respond to you, and you can understand each other, which is very hard for most of Africans. They speak English, but they cannot understand what you're saying. Okay, um, maybe when maybe let's let's put in the scenario the the Britain the Britain English. Okay, it is very hard for people to understand, but for me it is easier for me to understand because I've watched so much of British movies, so much of British um, culture, and similar to the US. Mm -hmm. Okay, the U.S. culture, like um, the story of how, how how so many slaves ended up in Atlanta and that stuff. I read it every day. Like, I want it to be on my head. Even when I'm there, I'm gonna be like, um, I know some streets in Atlanta, something like that. You know some streets. <laughs> You're not messing around. Are we heading outside? Yeah. Don't leave your chicken. Why that? Fuck. Can I get like a tissue, bro? Excuse? A tissue? I can never leave that, man. It's expensive. How much How much was that chicken and fries? Um, Three dollars. 
in US. You know, I know the US currency. So you yeah. exchange very quickly with the Kenyan one. Yeah. <laughs> Jasoni is pl- is plotting his his escape. He's like, look, I'm. Let ready. me tell you. Let me tell you one thing. My body is in Kenya, but my mind, man, I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping in uh, in Taylor Perry Studio tonight. Ah, really? <laughs> what do you know about Taylor Perry Studio? Damn, I know everything about Taylor Perry. You watch Tyler Perry movies? Like all of his movies. When the latest come out, I watch. That's why I know so many streets from Atlanta because all like all the series, like Sisters. Yeah. You know, even, Sisters. Even, even I've never seen Sisters. Oh. Oh, Sisters. It's it, it's being played in the B B T, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was. Now we're heading outside. All right, let's go outside. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's let's see how this goes. This is the club. Okay, let me see. Yeah, I'm going to perform there. Yeah, I'm gonna perform there. Perform what? What are you performing exactly? I'm, a, I'm an MC. Huh? An MC, like a, a standing. So you like uh, hosting uh, at night? Yeah, I'm, I'm the MC, but from one one p.m. my time. Let me ask you, so when you all go out and you're, let's say you're emceeing an event like that, are you speaking a different language other than English when you are out and about in Kenya? Swahili, yeah, mostly it's Swahili. You speak Swahili? Yeah. Okay. Cool, yeah, cool. Yeah. So, ah, okay. Yeah, okay. We are doing good. Are we? <laughs> it looks like, it looks to me like you are in Atlanta right now. My mind and soul is in Atlanta. They died a long time ago in Kenya. Uh, what what is it? What is it you want to do, and say, let's say the next four or five years? What is it you want to be doing? Acting. Acting, in what? I'm an actor, and I'm like, I'm gonna ask if I come to. Um, if I come to Georgia, I know of Georgia. If I come to Georgia, I'll go straight to Taylor Perry Studio, and I'm like, damn, you guys gonna interview me right now because I'm not leaving. <laughs> so, so, so I, I, I have to be the one to tell you that there are very many options of. There were very a lot of avenues and stuff. So as much as much as you know about Atlanta and Tyler Perry Studios, all these things, I will do my due diligence to introduce you to even more options, so you can know the full scale. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you this. Okay. So you already have the following, you know, on social media for the most part. I know that you also have your YouTube channel, which for some reason you don't promote as much yeah why is that first before we get in why is that is it is it because you want to do something different there no um for th- the thing is i i do a lot of acting and they cost me so much okay i have i have them i have them the the videos with me the content I already have them <clears throat> but mostly i'm like why would they post them over there? They costed me a lot. Why would they post them right now and I have like 88 subscribers? It won't go anywhere, okay? Okay. So like, I want to keep on doing small, small things until I have like a thousand, a thousand subscribers. Then I can start um, posting my content because I do have, I do have like 170 videos right now. I don't post them on TikTok. I don't. What's what's a movie that you've seen where you were like since you want to get into acting? What's what's a movie that you've seen where you were like, damn, I wish that was me playing that part? Well, I have seen um Into the Badlands. And I wish I, wish I was there. There's, there's a character playing into the Badlands. He's from Kenya. I wish I was him. 
His name is um oh my god, I'm forgetting his name. He was in the country like just a few days ago. You can search it. He, he, he acted in the Badlands. And I was like, I wish I could be like him. Uh I've watched this one. Uh, if loving me is wrong, I can play a good character over there because uh, there's just drama, you know? Yeah. I know how to drama. I know how to um bring drama in a in an acting, but out of acting, I don't want drama. Can you cry? Who makes it easy to cry? Let me see. Never um never be like um <laughs> cry right now on the streets. <laughs> when I, let me give you let me give you a good um there, there, there was this time I was going to act for um I was going to be auditioned, okay? okay. For act. Uh, do you know what made me cry? What? Um I was thinking well, so I'm gonna lose this thing because I don't know how to cry. Mm -hmm. No. And then I got angry and I cried and I won the audition because nobody cried. Everybody, everybody was like, so to cry. And they were like, I cannot cry. I was like, okay, you guys, you guys can't cry. Let me do it for you. How long? And then I did. This is why I, I, will, I will say this is a first. This is a series of first. First time chatting with you in this way. First time having a guest from Kenya. First time taking an interview that moved to outsiders. <laughs> I hope I'm busy, boy. You know, I'm, I'm so black. No, no, no. So if no, I'm not no. busy, boy, tell it. me to smile hard. I'm going to be like... Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> if, yeah, you could, yeah. if you could, if you could, Chasone, tell, tell me, so we, so we know that you definitely want to be doing these creative things, the performance arts. I guess I want to ask, what do you think is going to be, or what do you wish to be your avenue? Like, how do you wish to achieve the goal? Or what, what is the goal other than, other than just acting in general? Like, do you want to um, go ahead? Yeah, I have a goal. Like goal number one is to be successful. That's, that's goal number one. I'm going to be like, uh, my parents gave birth to me and they were so much into poverty. We couldn't afford a meal a day. <clears throat> so I grew up with, um, with all that in my mind that, you know what? I have to afford this meal for my children. I have to be successful. I have to fight each and every obstacle in my life. So my goal number one is to be successful. Yeah. And get out of this country. Goal number two is be able to afford anything I want. Because that is something my parents never did. They never afforded nothing. Like nothing. You know, we used to live like in the in, in, a, in an iron sheet um, cube. I call it a cube. It, uh, it, yeah, an iron sheet cube. Like my mom's bed is there my dad's bed is there we have like a coach okay and the table was somewhere in the middle so when we could when it could come to sleeping time we could carry the table put it on the chair and then like down we could um put like a mattress for me and my siblings and my mom and dad could use like the bed so my mom's bed is like on top of us like when you you do like this 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 is your mom's bed and i was like man and the funny thing is that the kitchen is just, just there. So it was a cube, like something to do with seven, seven by five meters. Yeah. Wow. You so, so you did have siblings? Yeah. I had six. I had six. We, were, we used to be six, but now we are three. Three died. Ah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Um, where did you come in? Are you the youngest? No, I'm the second born, but actually the first born because the, the, the first born died. So I became the first born. And then my two sisters that are following me. Uh -huh. And then my other two sisters died. 
like after my mom died, it was hard for me to, um, you know, raise money for for all my sisters. I needed to go to school also. That was after after I, after I left the street you know, and joined high school. Life became hard after that. Yeah. Because I had to provide to my sisters. I'm not in the streets anymore. Uh, and definitely, I couldn't be able to treat them when they were sick. And unfortunately, they died of sickness and hunger. Run. Um, yes. Okay, yeah. Sorry. So, so the siblings that are still with you, where are they? You, you still in um, they, are, they are in my aunt's place because after my mom died, we went to the countryside to my aunt's place. So they are still there in my aunt's place. Uh, my younger sister already finished high school. She's going to join um, college soon. Awesome. Yeah. I'm just saving the money for her college. The other one is big, married. Like he's twenty, he's twenty five. You know, I'm twenty seven, but many people think many people think I'm twenty two, twenty three, according to the way I I changed my ID. Yeah, I'm not mad to you. Let me. So okay, I think that we would we would be in trouble if we did not mention what I refer to simply as the boys, your brothers. <laughs> these are these are all the other people that. We see you with normally on social media who are equally having a good time and uh, that you spend a lot of time with. And I'm assuming at this point you have a strong connection with a lot of uh, a lot of them. Um, yes. Tell me, tell me about tell me about the crew. What do you all have? Do you have a name? <laughs> I feel like, yeah, we we, we, like call, we, call, we, call, we call ourselves um, Wakanda TikTokers. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, yeah? <laughs> yeah, but I enjoy it. Um, it's a name that suits us. Believe me. That name. Yeah. We call ourselves Wakanda TikTokers. They are also from the streets. When I was there, when we were young, I used to survive with them. So I know them from my childhood. Mm -hmm. And when I, went, when I went back to school, I came back and I was like, damn, man, these people are still in the same life. Oh. Do you do you feel like, and this is this could be just my perception. Do you feel like you are? Do you feel like you are the ringleader in that whole group? Of course, I am. <laughs> There's no debate about that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this as well. Do you think that by you finding your finding your lane, right? Finding your niche on social media, getting a following, getting supporters, all these things, do you think that has positively helped some of the other guys realize like there's more that they could be doing? Because like you said, you went away to school and you came back and you're like, Y'all still here? <laughs> do you do you think that you are showing them more options at, at this point yeah they have more more options so far okay and that sometimes they even ask me like um they ask me like where where where, where should they start from what should i do because uh, it is too much for them and they were like you know before before i bring i bring up uh, I, I i brought up the idea on the table they were like used to wake up asshole eat sleep okay wait for tomorrow but when I was like, no, man, there's something beyond this, okay? Yeah. The world is so beautiful beyond this. Because um, there are people who already lose hope in life. You know, the life in the street, you're like, yeah, whatever is going to happen, let it happen. Let it come the way it's coming, okay? So I gave, uh, I was like, I gave them an idea. Uh, and I told them, like, we, we can, we can, we can be something. Yeah, people can... Sorry. People can try to find us in something like that. And they're like, nah, who can find somebody who's from the streets? No one, man. Stop, stop it. So I used to do the lives alone. Mm -hmm. The gift I used to get, I used to help. Um, like I pay school fees for three children right now. Um, I pay I also pay like rent for some two girls. They got pregnant in the streets and they like 
they don't know they don't have nowhere to go and i know how it feels when you bring a child in such an environment so like um i pay for them rent house rent it's not expensive though over here with the support i get i can be able to pay school fees for the three children and the rent for the two girls yeah but it's good yeah so for me i can say the boys have got a lot and a lot of um options to choose from and to know like what they want in life i don't want to rush them i don't want to rush them because um they are now talking to people outside africa like all of them i know i know god <laughs> from the live yeah <laughs> funny thing is that some are even planning to get married <laughs> Ah. I, I I get it. I, I get it. I wish I didn't get it, but I get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh. Oh, man. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So before we before we go here, I want to... I, I, always, I always find it to be quite um interesting but also something that can end up being very cathartic for you in the future if you can if you can what i want you to do and when you do this you gotta you gotta lift up the camera you gotta be looking right in it and you gotta speak i want you to i'm just gonna listen but i want you to speak to your future self so when you revisit this Say, you know, whenever you feel like you need to. I want I want you to talk to yourself, but not in English, okay? I want you to give me straight up Swahili. And I want you to tell your future self like what you just just words of encouragement, right? You know, we all have life throws things at us. And so at some point you may be like, you know what, wait a minute. I had a message that I told myself a few years back. Let me go and revisit that and remind myself of what it is I want to achieve, right? Just to get you back on track, but not in English. I want people, I always want to give people a chance to hear a different tone, right? So oh, just man. say to yourself, hey, look, look, nigga, I know it's tough, <laughs> but you said that uh, you were going to do this. And so I'm telling you, my future self, that everything is going to be okay. You don't have to say exactly what I said. Say whatever you want to say to you, but let us hear it. Give us, whenever you are ready, tell yourself what you need. And I, and I just want to listen to this language. I, I, I love this shit. I'm was... ready. Um, I'm always ready. Just know that I am always ready. So let's, let's kick into Swahili. Um, Ntajambia hivi. Kwa kwa muda mrefu sahi nimekuwa nikingangana na maisha yangu na nimefikia mahali sahi um, naweza pata kufaulu na kusapotiwa na watu mbalimbali mbali. um, ili niweze kufikia ile ndoto yangu ya kukuwa mwigizaji katika um, nchi ya Amerika na hizo nchi za nje so, kwa sasa hii nimepata na urafiki yangu hapa tumeongea maneno mengi na nimefurahia kukuwa na yeye na ameni ameni pia ile moyo ya kuwa naweza naweza fanya kitu na kika kikaenea na ikanifanya nikawa mtu mwenye tamana sana katika maisha yangu na katika maisha ya watu wengine kwa hivyo mimi ndoto yangu kuu ni kukuwa moja kati ya uigizaji kule Marekani na ningependa sana kufanya kazi yangu ya uigizaji na eh, huu mwigizaji mkubwa ambaye ana studio zake huko Amerika anaitwa um, Taylor Taylor Shift Taylor Perry I mean anaitwa Taylor Perry napenda sana uigizaji zake vitabu zake na pindi anavoandika um, filamu zake napenda sana kwa sasa hii um, hakuna filamu yake ambayo sijatazama nimetazama zote 
ukiangalia kama um, kwa mfano inaendelea sasa kuna moja inaitwa the oval napenda kuifuatilia sana um, nimefanya mpaka nikanunua um, nikanunua ile uwezo wa kutazama katika BT napenda pia kufuatilia um, kuna nyingine pia anafanya kwa saa hii inaitwa um, Abona na isahau inaitwa nimetazama kwanza ile ambao nilitazama ya kwanza katika filamu za Telaperi ikafanya ni nipende ni, 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 ni kazi yake na uigizaji wake ni ile um, um, hello Fine. Are you guys from the US? Ah, uh, you take it's the cool fishing. Ah, uh, the club. Fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just walk from there. It's a fishing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's it's for me like the us. It's from the US. There too. So, sorry for the interruption. Um. Kwa saa hii um, kwa saa hii filamu ambayo nilivutia tele peri ni ile um, ya If Loving You Is Wrong niliweza kuitazama yote kwa muda ya kwa muda wiki mbili kwa sababu ilipokuwa ikitokea mimi nimeweza kuangalia ile filamu katika mnamo wa mwaka wa um, 2017 ndio niweza kuitazama filamu ile ya tela ya tela peri ya if loving you is wrong na nimeitazama nilitazama kwa muda wa wiki mbili kwa sababu ilinivutia sana na nilivutiwa na kazi yake hata kutoka hapo ikabidi nibadilishe um, ile mafikira kwa sababu nilikuwa nataka kufanya filamu zangu Hollywood um, na vitu kama hizo lakini sasa niliona filamu zake tela peri alafu nikaona vile um, anawaingiza wa Afrika wengi katika filamu zake kuna Afrika kuna Afrika wengi sana sana um, ile idadi kubwa ya wanaofanya kazi na Telaperi wana asili ya Kiafrika so mimi nikaona ni ni heri nikimfuatilia sana Telaperi um, nikaona nikimfuatilia akitoa movie zile alizotoa kule awali nikaona nazifuatilia na zitazama um, ikanipendeza kazi yake so kwa mimi nikaona ni vyema nikifanya kazi naye Telaperi nikiangalia filamu zake na uenda siku moja um, nikajishindia kufanya kazi naye so kwa sasa role model wangu kubwa ni Taylor Perry na actors wa Taylor Perry na lengo yangu kubwa na ndoto yangu kubwa ni kufanya katika studio za Taylor Perry na kukuwa moja kati ya uigizaji katika um, filamu za Taylor Perry asante I understood three words <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> But if you, I mean if you want you can kind of say what it is you say it in, a, in a, just in general. You don't have to, but if you want to you can. Okay. Okay. Um what I what I said it was that um I just talked of my of my dream and now I came to um put that dream in my mind. Like um I was in a movie shop. Let me tell you how I came across Taylor Perry, okay? Mm -hmm. I was in a movie shop. You know in a, in a, uh, in the rural areas it's very hard to afford a TV. We call the country rural, okay? Yes. In the country in the country it is very it's very hard to afford a TV. So there's only one TV and it's in the shopping center. Okay? It's a video it's a video um, a video shop. So you go there you pay to watch a video okay like it's a cinema but so rural it's not a cinema it's just a tv and a dvd and some series uh -huh. so they were like they were like searching series to play to play to play and i was like no why don't you play if loving you is wrong the tv show uh, yeah that, okay. that was that came across taylor perry that's how i came across georgia because, because at the end of uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I came across Georgia because I, at the end of every episode it was like Georgia. I was like, what is this George? What is this Atlanta? Some of that peach the peach logo. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, in Georgia. Exactly. 
Exactly. So you started researching. You said you had to figure out what was going on. So I, I, I'm, I'm that kind of a person who is very um, curious. Let me not say nosy, because if I say nosy, I don't want to be nosy, but I'm nosy. <laughs> no, it's so not. Want... It's good to it's good to have curiosity. It's it's good to want to see things outside of your own bubble, outside of your own understanding. And like you said, the world is big. There's there's a lot of um, options, a lot of avenues. And the most I can say is just to continue to have that that drive. I've been lucky yeah, enough yeah. to see many places around the world, and yeah, there's yeah. No, there's nothing like it. You know. There's, yeah, there's, yeah. there's nothing like being able to have experiences that are, I remember, I remember growing, growing up. So where, where I'm from, being from the South and Midwest here in the U.S., you're not um, in a coastal place. So you're not in like Miami or California or, you know, these places that everybody, everybody knows. So there's like no beaches and stuff, right? So I was probably like 18 or 19 when I first went to a beach and I remember going out to a beach and going on the dock and you know when you're there at the beach you look and you can kind of see to the horizon and then you don't see anything else and it's just yeah, like yeah. this shit just goes on and on and, it, and it, it made me think like we are really people humans we are really small and there's so much out there you know and that's always kind of set with me. So when I actually started to travel and go to other countries, meet other people, all these things, it just really solidified what I what I thought. Was like, yo, there's more to it than just this. So as much as you want to, you know, experience the US and travel to other places and things, there are also a lot of people here who are saying, hey, I want to you know, come to Kenya. I want to visit these places. And I think that's a good thing to have. That's a good um, energy to have. So whatever happens, never lose that. You know? I, I, know shit, I know shit goes on that can discourage you and you can be like, ugh, this is taking too long or this hasn't happened yet. I feel like that all the time. But if, as long as you have that fire burning in you, you have that, that drive, I, I'm sure it will come around. And hopefully you don't have to marry someone to do it. That's the that easiest, the easiest way. way. And I'm like, uh, let, let, me tell you funny, let me tell you funny thing. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for you. How about oh, to come there and I'm already sorted with the love of my life. So I'm like, yeah, I'm not chasing my dreams. So, just on as we head out here, if you could tell the people where they can uh, follow you, where they can find you, keep up with all the things that you are doing, uh, join the lives and interact with you and, and so on. Um, give us the rundown. It's only TikTok. Uh, if, you, if you find me on TikTok, you'll find me everywhere because I won't tell you Facebook because Facebook, um, people have kind of similar names. So it's very hard to find me over there. But on, on, on TikTok, you have one username that is only yours. Nobody else can have it. Did you realize what is, that? What is it? It's Chesoni. Spell it. C H E double S O N I. Did I miss a spelling? I think you got it. I think. <laughs> Is there an underscore in there or something? I don't know. No, 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 no. It's just just funny. <laughs> oh goodness! And of course, you know that you can find this particular uh, program. If you're watching this on YouTube, you made it this far. You may as well go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or you just want to share good vibes, good energy, then go ahead and do so. You can find Ubiquitous Blacks all over the social media, Ubiquitous Blacks. If you go onto Google and you type it in and you misspell it, guess what Google will do? It'll put up a thing. It'll say, did you mean click that? If you click that, then you'll find us. If you are listening to this as a podcast, 
be sure to uh, leave a rating and a review. And of course, share, share this around, share the love. Um, there's no sense in us just being here by ourselves. And if you're enjoying yourself, share it with someone else who you think might enjoy this too. I, of course, am T-Ron. You can find me all over social media. On Instagram, that's T-Ron World. Uh, on TikTok, that's T-Ron with two underscores at the end. And, of course, you can always email us, ubiquitousblacks at gmail.com. Chesoni, I want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, let me see around Kenya a little bit. <laughs> and then just spending this time with me. Click my camera. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This looks this looks like Atlanta. So you're not missing anything. No, 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 no. This is nothing like Atlanta. You stop lying to me. I'm man. telling you the truth. This look this looks I, like Do you know why I'm here, actually? Tell me. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Do you know why I'm here, actually? Why? Because I came to perform. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. This is for the rich. Oh, okay. So you're not normally in this area, is what you're saying? No. <laughs> you have to show us your area sometime. I, I came. I came for some cash, man. Me, me when I when I when I go to places, I like to see the real, not just you know yeah. Yeah, nice shit. So when I when I when I make it to Kenya, I'll I'll find you. You have to show me the shit. <laughs> You have to show me the the real shit. We'll, we'll do the we'll do this, but you have to show me the real stuff too. <laughs> ah. But again, I want to thank you for um, spending the time and hanging out with me. It's great to finally actually talk to you in this way. And the one thing that I love the most is that when you are talking to someone and there's and you're being genuine, right? It doesn't yeah. feel like it's work, right? It just we're just literally just getting along here. This is, and I always tell people they're, they're surprised because they think I just know everyone that I'm talking to. This is our first time talking, y'all. And this is this is what it is, you know? Yeah. So I appreciate it. And, and, I, and I've enjoyed you. And I definitely enjoy seeing uh, your growth. And I know that there's more to come for you, buddy, for sure. So in keeping with the, the, the overall theme of the show, whether you are Black, <laughs> in Atlanta, Georgia. All black in Kenya. We, we are black everywhere. Everywhere.